I just built this really cool Freddy Fazbear costume, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So as you know from my previous two videos on making Freddy, I tried making out of this weird squishy foam, and it kinda worked, but not the way I wanted it to. It was too plushy and too squishy. This is when I discovered EVA foam. This stuff's like a godsend for cosplayers like me. It's easy to work with, it holds really well together, and it's fairly cheap. You can get a pretty decently sized roll for only like 20 to 30 bucks. But you can't just slap together EVA foam and expect it to look like Freddy. You need some sort of accurate pattern to make a good looking and accurate Freddy. This is when I discovered the Unfold King. He makes a bunch of Peppy Cure models of all sorts of video game characters, including Freddy, and even Bonnie. But the Freddy is what I needed. This dude's really cool, I'd recommend buying all your templates from him. And for those of you who don't know what Peppy Cure files are, Peppy Cure basically takes a 3D model and then is able to break it down into different shapes that you can cut out of paper and then glue back together into a 3D shape. And that's exactly what I would need if I was going to build this whole thing out of EVA foam. So first I would just print them out on a normal printer, but that really wasn't working because the pages were much too small to print the entire pattern on. So I asked my dad if I could use his really big industrial printer, and he even offered to help me cut out all the pieces. Thanks dad. So once I got all the pieces cut out, I then glued them together to make a 3D shape. And then once I had that 3D shape, and I cut it out. This process is actually kind of fun, it's like putting together a giant 3D puzzle. So once you got all the templates cut out, you trace them onto the EVA foam. You want to make sure you find a good sweet spot when cutting the paper. If you got the pieces too big, then it's not able to fold down all the way and you lose accuracy there. And you're not able to get the full shape. But if you got them too tiny, then you lose accuracy through the cuts. And make sure once you're done with one half, you flip it over to the other side to do the other half. Also, I'd recommend when tracing them out, you put lines on where they connect so you can more precisely put them back together. Now that we've finally accomplished the long task of cutting and gluing all the pieces of EVA together, it's time to start putting all the felt and fabric on it. I use felt and fleece because it looks like that matted, fluffy texture that some of the animatronics have. And it's really easy to stretch and pull over things, so if you don't get the cut exactly right, then it's okay because it can just stretch right over. Now that we got a good fabric selection, you want to make sure to buy like 1.5 times the amount you think you need. It's always good to have more of the material you need than less and come short a little. Alright, now it's time to start making the pattern of the fabric. So first you cover all the parts that you want to cover with fabric and cling wrap. Yeah, the weird stuff you use to cover your food. It works, don't ask me why. Now that you've done this, you need to cover the whole thing in duct tape now. But what this does now is it makes a really nice, sturdy pattern of what you need. So you take it off and cut it out flat. But it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, because remember, this fabric can stretch a little, so it doesn't have to be exact. So once you're done tracing and cutting out all the pieces, you glue it on. I use hot glue, but you can use something else, like spray glue. It is messy, but it works. When cutting off the fabric, you might notice that you cut it a little short on places, but to fix that, what you do, you take a thin strip of the fabric you use, then just use a light amount of glue and then stick it on. It's barely even noticeable once you do it. And to give some places a little more detail on the fabric, I used a brown sharpie to make things look more in depth, such as the muzzle and jaw. To make the teeth, I just got squares of EVA foam and then painted them white with spray paint. It took a couple of layers, but I think I got a really nice kind of worn white teeth look. And for the animatronic parts on the ears, I just got two strips of EVA foam again and then glued them together and then spray painted them silver. It gave a really nice effect to it. And the eyebrows are just two slices of black EVA foam. It worked pretty well. For the nose, I used some of that squishy foam and covered it with black fabric. So my design called for the eyes and eyelids to be able to move along with the ears. The eyes would only need about those small 9G servo motors, and those would be able to work fine. But for the ears, they're a lot more heavier, and thus would require a lot more torque. So I used a slightly bigger servo motor. Once I glued them all in place, I had to wire up the circuits. Now I'm not going to explain how I programmed or wired it. There's plenty of other videos on how to do it, and I barely even know how I did it myself. And I wasn't able to get it all done, but in the end, I think what did work looked really cool. The eyes are made using a very cool process. First you take those half ornament little craft things, then you print out the pupil and then glue it in with clear glue. And then once I did that, I sprayed it painted the inside of the eye white to give it that nice shiny look. And the paint was thin enough to where if you shine a light through it, the eye would light up. 
For the eyelid, I just painted the inside black too to give it that nice shiny black look. I also wired in some LEDs into the eyes to make them light up. So once I was done with that, I put elastic straps connecting from the head to the jaw and some support using EVA foam to where if I used my jaw, the mouth of Freddy would also move. I also stuffed the head full of that squishy foam to where my head could fit comfortably inside of it. It was positioned to where I would be able to see out of the mouth. It was kind of hard to see through, but it is what it is. You can take all the vision you can get with these big bulky costumes. All right, now it's time to wire up the voice amplifier. So I bought this cheap voice amplifier online along with this circuit board. This circuit board will allow me to program noises into it to where if I press a button, noises would come out of the voice amplifier. Here we got the soundboard up. This is the laugh. Uh, 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 uh. The nose honk. The Torador March, and the Kill Switch. Nice. I control it by a control panel inside of the left hand. This hand is actually just a dummy hand, and the microphone prop is actually where I control the noises with buttons inside of it. I use gym mats, which is made out of thick EVA foam, and put it on the feet to give myself just a little extra height. I then got a black morph suit, so any parts of me that would show out of the costume would just be black. Maybe someday I'll add some sort of mechanical looking stuff in between the joints to make it more accurate. Now it's time to go on some test runs. It's important to do test runs because if something breaks, it's better to break now than later while you're out. And by this time, I was running on a really tight schedule. Halloween was just in the next couple of days and I had to get this costume done. To get into the character of Freddy, I literally just sat for a whole day watching old videos of broken animatronics trying to mimic their movements. It was kind of awkward, but it fit the character, and it looked really good. But finally, after all this hard work and effort, all the monies I've spent, it was finally showtime. I think this costume turned out really good and creepy. I mean, this kid seems to agree. After a few hours of wearing it, I got pretty tired in it. You get really hot and sweaty after breathing your own air for a few hours. I was thinking I'm not going to do another costume, but then there's this one kid who recognized me from last year. So this means there will be a new project coming, and I always plan bigger and better each time. It was really fun and awesome making this project. And if you think so too, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Proto Mechanics.